trees. Trees have 20 <laughs> different ways of communicating with each other. Hi, I'm Allie Bierman, your guide to the invisible forces that drive your life in each moment. Today's guest, Flora Rudolph, is the expert on tree <laughs> life, everything about them. You met her back in episode 83, Meeting wow. Trees, and I introduced you then to her deck of cards, tree transformation cards. And today we're going to go to some fun new places because I've spent my life up in trees. And anytime I was upset or wanted to be alone, I'd be up in trees. And very interesting things would happen to me, but nothing close to what Flora is going to share with us today. And I'm so happy and grateful to have you with us, joining us again today. Welcome, Flora. Thank you. Thank you, Allie. That's wonderful. Good to see you. And I know that you you have extraordinary experiences why that you were able to create that whole deck of cards, which is just an extra little thing. It's really, really beautiful, incredible information. And if you see trees and you don't know what they are, anything about them, I know there are a lot of people out there who go on nature walks and they identify everything, but what you do is a whole different thing. Yeah. So would you share some of your more recent different kind of experiences that I don't know anybody else who has them? So you're exactly right. It's like when you just, when you come from that place of information, and that's just <clears throat> kind of on the surface. It's like if you meet somebody and you go, oh, they have, you know, brown hair and they have a blue dress on and they're about five foot five and they look to be at such and such age and whatever. That's the surface. That's like saying it's an ash tree and it's how many big years old or whatever and it needs this and that. That's the surface. And getting underneath the surface is where you're going to find the juicy parts of meeting a tree and where you're going to connect with it because like if they have 20 different ways or more of communicating with themselves that science has recognized science tends to in my experience kind of come after people's intuitions and after the collective consciousness goes you need to know this now everybody and they dump it down <laughs> <laughs> and so they communicate with themselves in at least 20 different ways, multitudes of ways. And they are also extremely aware of us, which just is amazing. And so um, it's so inviting and so healing and just walk out and there's discoveries out there of hanging out with trees. And each of them has a very different energy. Um, just this last week, I did, um, I was doing a couple workshops with people and afterwards I went to just hang out with my trees and be with them. So I went to the Chinese white pine, which is one of my dearest friends. And immediately it said, drop what you know and be wise. It's like, that's the whole thing. That is the whole thing. And I'm working on this, um, course that I'm putting together for the first time, and it's called Tree Speak, which is all about that, like getting out of your head and moving into that different level of experience so that you can actually connect with trees, with the earth, with everything and with yourself at a much deeper and more, mag more magical level. That's kind of where everything happens. And so then the second time I did the, <clears throat> the next class I had, I was really pretty tired after, and I was wandering around, and I ended up in the apple grove. And if you haven't ever, I've never sat in an apple grove, that's what you want to do. It's unbelievable. These trees are such a community. It's like being in a knitting circle or something. They're so like harmonious, like this buzzing, happy, productive community. And I fell asleep in this apple grove. And when I woke, it's like, I just felt so over, just so calm, but very ready to get on with things. And that productivity, just that very calm, even productivity has carried through for over a week in my life. Oh. Yeah. 
cool. <laughs> and then the next one I went to, I was working, I'm working on my course. So, <clears throat> excuse me, I, um, one of the th things I'm focused on is being able to tune into that um, current of quiet that goes through everything. And it's real hard for us to get quiet right now. It's almost impossible in the exterior world. So we have to find it inside. But it's a nourishment and a like a almost like a mineral or a vitamin that we need to maintain balance. Just that deep quiet, almost beyond stillness, really. Just quiet. So I went to the Tupelo and I sat leaning up against its trunk for over an hour to do a meditation for my course on quiet. And that has just sustained me. I mean, I came back and for the whole week, I've just, the answers have just been loading into, I just, whenever I wanna know what to do, it's just right there. And I'm excited about everything. It's like just full of product, this is calm productivity, but from a real deep space of quiet, that's what trees can do for you. And it's not just me. If it's available for me, it's available for everybody. You know, um, so that's kind of, I just, that's the background of how it can work. The way I came to this was um, through a traumatic brain injury that kind of knocked me out of everything I had known. You don't have to do that. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> you really don't. You just need to get some skills and have an intention and a sense of curiosity and go meet trees. So. Um, the course I'm doing is like lead you step by step from like what understanding what how our connection with the forest and with trees has been through time as humans to how to get some skills, just the basics on meeting a tree. And if you follow those, you'll be able to do it. You might get answers. You might get just a great, wonderful feeling um, and sense of peace and joy. You might, all kinds of things can happen. The tree can give you messages. There's so many layers that can happen. And always it will be good. <laughs> There's nothing that um, strange or odd that will happen that you won't like. Um, so it goes all the way from the beginning to up to being really connected in a community of trees and the skills for doing that and getting out of your head how to do that. There's like exercises and for, um, sensory exercises, because <clears throat> like with forest bathing, which is um, kind of science's approach to bringing us back to connecting with trees. Mm -hmm. And we, our minds love science, of course, I love science, but it's just like we need our Western mind, our modern mind wants to know that science has given a stamp of approval on things before we really embody it. So Forest bathing uses, has acknowledges that you use your senses to actually connect. So if you just start going out and smelling and touching and seeing and really not thinking about your head, but being curious of what's really around you, you'll start to notice movement that you didn't see before, colors and textures and the light coming through and you'll notice the wind on your skin and the air. And it's just fabulous. And that helps lead you into a deeper experience of being connected to yourself so that you're not feeling so separate. And also just being um, open to the messages and the connection with the tree. So what I do is forest bathing is kind of, it's at that level. What I do is go to a, a deeper level, which is the actual meeting of the tree. When I was recovering from the brain injury, I spent um, most of my time doing this um, because it was so mind boggling and fabulous. And it's just like each tree has a different energy, just like you do. <laughs> just like when you meet somebody, you have a different sense of them. And it's the tree and you're connecting with that. And the more you connect with that energy, which is always the same. They don't have a mind messing things up, <laughs> dragging them around. They're just present, putting out their energy 24-7, uh, and they're generous, and they're available. So when you start to do this, it's just this real incredible discovery.
I can't, I could go on for days talking about it, but I'll stop for a minute. It's, it's the most perfect fit because the last few weeks I've been talking about never coming from up here because your mind isn't even your voice right. and always come from your heart because you're feeling it. And I go out and I like to go out and spend a half hour in direct sunlight. And there are lots and lots of trees in the yard and in the neighborhood. So the first thing I look for is which direction are the leaves pointing? Because the oh. leaves turn and follow the sun. So yeah. before I even go out the door, I know where the sun's going to be in the sky. Nice. Very and nice. I, and I, I used to talk out loud to the trees. I realized I don't need to do that. So I just talk in my head. And when and I often do my Qigong practice out there with the trees. And I'll look down and there'll be a leaf on my foot. And <laughs> it wasn't an accident that it came down and landed on my foot. No, it's like, hi, Ellie. <laughs> yeah. So I, I was thinking when I was out the other day, and I didn't get a response from the tree. I was wondering what they experience when like they're starting to change colors now. So they're stopping the green chlorophyll and all that. And then they yeah. fall. And at first I was asking, does it hurt you or feel bad? And then I thought, no, it protects you for the winter. Do you right. have any feelings about that? You know, my feeling is trees just know what to do. I mean, they've been doing this for like the oldest conifers, like 350 million years. Wow. Yeah. And we're here for like 200 to 300,000 years. That's the deal. They know how to live on the planet. They know how to live with, with their own tree selves, obviously, and what's going on in the earth and to connect in community and harmony. So I think they just, it's just it feels right to them. Hmm. You know, like I'm trying to think of a similar thing that we do as humans because we um, go through different phases. You know, sometimes we're more out there and sometimes we're pulling back our energy. I know that in the winter when trees, they really consolidate their energy into a deep core and it's powerful. It's just mighty, the, tr the energy coming through the trees in the winter, but it's really deep. Where in the summer and spring, they're out. It's out there. Um, so in the fall, I don't think there's pain. I don't get that at all. I just get like this natural process. Some trees, like willows and such, when they no longer need a branch, they just throw it off. They just drop it when it's no longer what should be happening with the tree. So they, they, have a, they have a huge system of maintaining their being, their physical being. That tree often goes down, they're usually often on water. Yeah. The tree goes down the creek and then it clones into another identical tree. Mm. That's pretty cool. <laughs> they're just, um, so I don't think there's any more, I think that's more like our projecting ourselves onto trees. Because if we, something fell off of our finger fell off, it would hurt. <laughs> you know, but yeah. Yeah. I was wondering, uh, there, I'm an older person living in this neighborhood and the generation of younger people, we, we had a big block party the other day, and this mm -hmm. younger person was saying, so he bought the house, moved into the neighborhood, and he cut down 13 trees, mm. which explained why I was hearing constant sawing and sawing. I didn't know what it was. And I thought, I didn't understand why he did it. I didn't ask him why he did it. But I'm imagining that the tree knows their neighbor. I'm thinking they're feeling hurt. I don't know. I can project a lot of stuff. Yeah, I think that's true, though. I think that's true. Um, I go to an arboretum often because that's what's close to me. And they're always like trying to fix the trees. Oh. And it just hurts. You know, I don't know that I don't really understand why that 
why they believe that's necessary, I need to investigate it more. But just cutting off branches and randomly making trees into what we think they should be versus what the tree knows that it needs. Yeah. I don't like it. (laughs) It doesn't work in my heart. Yeah, I I lived in a house where the whole front under the picture window were rose bushes. Mm -hmm. And some people who were helping with my garden cut them like all the way down so they were only a foot tall. But they came back. Right. And I don't know, it felt like it, doesn't that hurt? <laughs> or do they like that? Do they like to have I know. new growth and new experience? I'm in the same place with it. <laughs> I, I, I'll get that figured out, <laughs> but I don't have it figured out yet. <laughs> but I don't, it doesn't feel right. It doesn't sit right with me. They um, prune some, like too many branches on my Chinese white pine friend. Um. And it just felt like that tree was so wounded and it took it over a year to bounce back. But you thought, yeah. Yeah. Many, many years ago, a friend took me down to, I love everything Native American, and she took me to what was once a Native American reservation. It's like, must have been a long time ago because I can't find any information on that (laughs) tribe. But we went into this open field surrounded by trees. And I had to leave because I felt this energy of violence. And I don't know if the communication was coming from the land or the trees that maybe there was something like a massacre. Something awful happened there. Yeah. And I could never go back there. Yeah. Ooh, chills. Yeah. 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 So it's that sensitivity that allows you to actually get become connected with what's going on around you, whether it's painful or beautiful, right? Without that, we're just walled off, sealed up in our little world, and it's painful. It's awful. <laughs> I love what you were saying earlier about the silence, because I grew up alone in my house, mm-hmm. and so it was always silent, and I love silence. But every place they go... People have to play what they call music and it's playing all the time and it's loud and I don't like it. Yeah, it's noise. Everybody everybody (laughs) else seems to like it and it's like, am I odd? I don't know. I'm I'm with you. (laughs) So, yeah, with like with the Tupelo, because that tree tree specifically transmits silence. That's Mm -hmm. or quiet, actually quiet. Incredible. Um, you really get that um, to learn to like accept the anything that's going on with the sounds around you as part of your moment, part of what is going on, but to drop down into a much deeper place. And it's a real discipline because we've never learned to do this, you know, yeah. but when you can get into that deeper place, um, and you can transmit that silence both to yourself or quiet out. Yeah. And then you're regenerated at that level too, I think. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. 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 I, uh, I, like I said, I spent much of my life up in trees and people don't look up. So I'd I know. be up there <laughs> and they'd be walking by and I was out. Uh, when I was in college, I went out one night and I was feeling distressed, so I just climbed the tree. Yeah. And this couple came along. They didn't know I was up in the tree, and they're getting all lovey dovey down below. And I'm thinking, and you're like, what am I going to do? <laughs> <laughs> it's great. That's great. <laughs> I remember when I was a little kid and I was up in the tree and this cute little girl, I, I was a, a young girl too, but she was even younger. She came bopping down the street. We didn't have sidewalks. And she was just happily singing along. She didn't know anybody was listening. Mm-hmm. And I just thought, it's cool being up there. I used yeah, to go in cool the woods. I didn't know where I was going, but I always knew I was safe. That's right. I used to live in trees as a kid, too. And I don't know how I survived because I thought I could fly from branch to branch. Oh, wow. So I would go way up in the top 
it seemed like way in the top to me as a kid. I don't know where I went in reality, but and just move around. And I had rooms all over the trees. And um, I remember like sixth, seventh grade, I had a little boyfriend and he walked me home from school and I climbed up in my tree and talked to him. <laughs> but I just felt so right there. I mean, that's where I went all the time. I didn't really like the chaos inside my house. There's always too much going on, you know? So yeah, exactly. <laughs> I think there are so many people out there um, who are tree people. You think so? I do. I keep running into, every time I meet and uh, work with anyone in, from any, in anything I'm doing, people feel, everybody feels like they have a special connection with trees of some sort. Huh. It's, um, <clears throat> It's like their territory. And I think that's because it's as humans, it's what we've always done historically. And then over this last period of being humans, we've dropped all away from it and became, you know, in our cars and our homes and our technology, et cetera. But before that, we always, we went to trees for everything. We went to the grove to solve all our problems, to have marriages, to get healing for everything. It was what we did, even to solve legal issues. People went to the forest, to their grove. You know, the sacred groves, all that history that comes down to us from like the Druids and everybody. It's from every Greeks everywhere. Um, it's just what we've done. And you, it makes so much sense because they're so much older than us as far as like their longevity on the planet. Mm -hmm. And so you think here we are, humans coming, <laughs> coming up in the in the whatever, as a species, and we look around, there's these trees, they're huge, they're magnificent. So, you know, obviously, we're paying attention to them, and we're going to them, we're tuning into them. The first, through every culture that I have found, there's like, people believe that the first humans, the first man and woman actually stepped out of trees. Mm. It's just like we are so, our ancestry, our deepness is so connected with being with trees. And I think there's a resurgence of that coming. People like, because there's such a massive need to be connected and to have direction and stability and grounding in this insane world we've created that I think there's a there's a, a large segment of people who are returning to that, looking for that, longing for that, even if they don't know what it is yet. I know there are lots and lots of parks. Every place I go, I ride by yeah. parks. And I'm glad what you shared about the apple grove, because I'm in apple country. I'm gonna go out in an apple grove and see what happens for me. That's perfect. It's so lovely. When I the first time I did it, it's like, why haven't I done this before? You know, everybody's got an apple tree around them somewhere, right? We're so entwined with them. They're in our body all the time, right? It's just, yeah, exactly. I had three apple trees in the house where I raised my kids. So, mm. yeah, we always had our apples. Nice. <laughs> well, I want to be sure that you present the information for people to come and enjoy your program because it's just fascinating being with you and I'm into trees but like I said you're at a whole nother level and to be teaching the whole course or do you give everybody the details and we'll have the link in the show notes yes thanks Sally so um on my website which is called meeting trees you just go to meeting trees and it's right there on the menu bar, bar. it's called tree speak and there's a drop down menu it'll show you the whole course there's five modules it's um it's it's an evergreen program but i'm running i'm work i'm going with people through this first round of it which starts on september 30th however there's an introductory there's actually like six modules really because there's an introductory module that you get as soon as you join and um then on the September 30th, you del get delivered the first module and it goes through all the different stages um, of how to meet a tree and can, how to know when a tree is calling to you. Um, 
there's an essential shift that I lead you through on how to get out of your head and be with the tree, yeah. um, how to connect with the community of trees, um, and how to start really discovering. It's just, just using your curiosity and your sense of adventure to go out there and meet all these trees and connect at much deeper levels and develop relationships with them. So it goes through all of that. So it's meeting trees, tree speak. <laughs> oh, I definitely want to share that because thank you. It's important to live from your heart. Yeah. So thank you for being you. Thank I'm you. so grateful to know you and to spend this time <laughs> with you today. Me too. Back to you. <laughs> <laughs> I, and I want to thank all of you for joining us here today for this special edition of Let's Get Metaphysical Connecting Heart and Mind. This is a show episode as opposed to a regular episode. <laughs> And also remember, join our Facebook group where you can ask questions, get some extra material, make a new friend. And all these links will be in the show notes where you can go to the show site so you can either watch or listen to. And if you haven't yet listened to Flora's episode number 83, Definitely listen to that one too, because it's if you thought today was neat, that one is just gonna move you into a deeper level. <laughs> and Thank you, Judy. Remember that Audible always has a free trial through our site, and it's 30 days to go in and look around. And you know, I always have a book to recommend for you. And the book I'm recommending today is Hidden life of trees so <laughs> if you were fascinated by all of this i'll have all of this for you to be able to go and grab it as your free download in your trial ah wonderful yeah it, it'll be a lot of fun and the most important thing of all to remember is to enjoy that's capital i n capital j o i every moment because nothing happens outside of you all happens within and i think you got that message double today because floor is living there too <laughs>